Okay. Hi, I'm Aaron Levitt, and I'm standing in the cage here at my TV. We've just had KWC2 with me this week. Unfortunately, not Alan. He's a little ill. Alan, get better. I have Monk from Brooklyn, Antonio Graceffo, and Kru Chan Uh Guys, first fight. I believe you're to blame for that, Antonio. <laughs> okay, I taught the guys this thing, that when you mount the guy, you put your pelvis right on his belly, you get great hooks, and you like just push the air out of him, and you're not supposed to win with it, it's just to annoy him. But the guy on the bottom tapped, and now the problem is, to put it in the record book, we have to give that submission a name, and it's not a real submission. <laughs> what are we going to call it? Uh... <laughs> I, I won't want to name it, you know. I, I'll leave that to Antonio. The chest compression. The chest compression. <laughs> you can't call it that because that's what CPR is. Yeah. Uh, it was pretty weird. It was all the way across the cage from where we were. He didn't even have both legs locked. He only had yeah. one. But he put a lot of pressure down. The guy clearly couldn't breathe, and uh, he tapped. Well, you're um, taking a good shot to the nose earlier. You know, his nose was probably broken or certainly bleeding. So, I guess he just kind of gave up mentally. <laughs> Which, of course, you've never done. I've uh, done many times. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was fight one. Fight two, I've got notes this week, uh, was kind of annoying but also kind of interesting. It ended in a guillotine and there was uh, an arm lock there that I thought was going to take a, a shoulder out of its socket. Uh, what did you think of that one? Yeah, I mean, the, the, the fighter in the dominant position, he got an arm lock, but it was, uh, you know, it's, it, it was an accidental arm lock. I'm sure he's never learned that anywhere. It just fell into that position. And what he needed to do, he needed to just, just, just bring his knees in and sort of keep the guy from moving because the guy was squirming and that was taking off the pressure. And at some point, he just gave up the arm lock and went for something else. And, you know, I really think he should have stayed there. should have stayed with it. John, what did you think? Yeah, it was, uh, that arm was in a weird position. It was, some t it was like a weird Kimura you know, somewhat, but uh, yeah, I mean, if he was pushing up on the hand, that was a problem. If he would have just got a little lower on the elbow and pushed that up, that shoulder would have just fell right out of his socket. Which would have been the end of somebody's season, yeah. that's for sure. Can I just say, it looked like something you'd see on a piece of old pottery from Greece. <laughs> it kind of did, actually. Okay, fight... it was. <laughs> fight ended in the guillotine. It was uh, as soon as we saw that go in, you said, that's it, fight's done. I didn't hear you, but I'm pretty sure you I, said the same thing. I jumped. I, I, just, I just went crazy because I was afraid for the guy, you know. I was like, but I, right there, I thought the fight was over. I really thought the fight was going to be over right yeah. there. Okay, fight three, I know, was your favorite, Antonio. And, uh, yeah, yeah, that was the best fight. You were going for it. Uh, first armbar of the night. I'm going to go this way this time. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> give us uh, your thoughts on it. Yeah, it was an uh, like action-packed fight. You know, it was back and forth. Uh, uh, you have, this is like, you have, you know, Chin Hom, uh, was in the red corner, he's, you know, a Padazze fighter, and you have uh, Pring Naren, which is, you know, a uh, Padazze fighter also, but with better grappling. Yeah, the fight was, it was back and forth, you know, these guys was on top of each other, reversing positions, you know, getting mounted and then unmounted and then, you know, sweeps and stuff like that. And then, you know, the fight ended uh, in the second round by armbar. Uh, textbook, it was, he, he did it right, you know, he got the mount. Ground and pound, you know, the guy gave up the arm, just snatched that arm and just cranked it. Tony. Yeah, I would say definitely out of all the fights we saw, that was my favorite fight. It was the best fight. It included some of that, uh, what do they call it, where they hit with their hands? <laughs> there was punching, there was kicking. No, because so many of these fights, they just come out and they just like smash each other and then fall on the floor, you know? But this one, there was punching, there was kicking, uh, and the grappling was actually good. I mean, they were doing real stuff in their grappling. So, yeah, it was a very good fight. Right, the next fight. Fight four also ended in an armbar. Uh, didn't make it to the second round. That ended in the first round. Uh, you guys weren't quite so happy with that one. Uh. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a pretty boring fight. <laughs> it was uh, it's like these guys was afraid to hit each other. No, that's, that, that's what it seemed like. So it was just, you know, one guy mounted, guy sweeps, he mounts. Then the guy sweeps again, then he mounts. So it was just back and forth. I mean, these guys was just getting mounted too easily and getting reversed too easily. And doing nothing, and doing yeah. nothing while they were in the mount, doing nothing from the bottom. They, they, they mm -hmm. did nothing, it was just, just like Chan said, yeah. it was like, it's like a seesaw game. It was really, you know what, it's the exact reason some people hate MMA. Okay. <laughs> you know, it's just a lot of hugging, that's, that's what it was. Uh, Alan often talks about uh, lack of certain basic defense, particularly pulling the arm off, and removing the arm. I was listening to both of you, and you were both saying, you can't bridge, you yeah. can't sweep, 
unless you let go. They were both right, trying right, to sweep right, yeah, and right, guard at the right, same right. time. Yeah, they, I mean, there were so many cases where the guy on the bottom was holding the top guy's head and then pushing on his hips with his heels. Well, where's he going to go? Either you want him to go away, then you got to let go and push him. You know, if you want to pull him, then you pull him. And, and they kept doing moves like that where they were working against themselves. And, but very common in MMA everywhere is that you see guys going for the choke yeah. in a position that you can't actually <laughs> choke from that position. And the, and, and the solution is just try harder, you know. That's, that's what I stress a lot, you know. Like, if a guy is mounted, you know, basic, you want to buck your hips up, you know, and try to get him off you. But you can't buck up and hold on to the guy at the same time, you know. It, it kind of defeats the purpose of, of pushing him off while you're pulling him back in. So, yeah, I mean, if, if you want to escape that, don't hold on to the guy. Push him away, you know. That's basic, you know. Okay, a lot of guys trying to achieve two completely opposing uh, techniques at the same time. And uh, this is kind of like pushing magnets together. They don't want to go or yeah. trying to pull them apart. They won't come apart. It was just repetition again and again. Went into an arm bar and uh, tapped very quickly yeah. Uh, yeah, on yeah. that. I think somebody wanted to uh, hold on to his... <laughs> he saved us. <laughs> Keep his elbow in one piece. Um, and the last fight uh, in a chokeout, now we saw the referee... Uh, uh, carry out a somewhat obscure rule, you actually asked what was going on and uh, Chun Rik had to explain it. Uh, yeah, uh, the, the, the two fighters was on the ground, you know, they, was, they wasn't really doing much, so they got this rule where, you know, well, unofficial rule, you know, I don't know, but um, if the fighters are not doing anything for over a minute, they stand up to fight, but they kind of stand up to fight right when a guy sunk in a, a real naked choke, you know, so the, the other guy, pretty, he got pretty angry at that, you know, so... Uh, he ended up winning the fight in a rear naked choke anyway. Yeah, I, you know, and I, I to totally agree with Chan. I mean, you know, to see the guy get stood up right as he's sinking the rear naked, but, but I have to say, in all fairness, sinking would be not the accurate word. He sort of was going for a rear naked choke. You know, he, I, I didn't think he was going to get it. When they stood him up, I was like, hey! Oh, no, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> They've been there for a long time, uh, and as they both said, the choke was going in, but boy, it took a long time to yeah. come. Uh, long time, yeah. And then it didn't take too much longer for the next like, one to uh, come in. Like Antonio said, the guy should have, you know, got that choke during the weigh-ins, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Took a very long time. Okay, that's it for this week. Next week, hopefully, Alan will be recovered and be back with us. Uh, Antonio probably won't be uh, on the move again, Might be traveling. back in China. Might be back in China. Chan Riek should be here. Dave should be a couple of weeks away, so come back next week. In fact, come back next week and watch the fights. Some of them are brilliant. Yeah.